You can play any shooter for two hours. But it's after that two hour point the narrative becomes absolutely essential. I think the story of Halo Wars is really about the characters. You try and make these believable characters exist in this, you know, fantastic universe where, you know, humanity's at war with aliens. If you don't relate to the characters and care about them, then you're not going to care about the context, you're not going to care about the universe and the weapons and the ships and everything. Halo Wars is a, is a strategy game. A lot of choices you can make in the gameplay. And what we really need to do to kind of balance that on the story side is have this cast of characters. A group of characters is kind of like an analogy to the real-time strategy game to many groups on the ground. So telling the story of a group of characters seemed like the way to go forward. Just like the game itself, it's more of a bird's eye view. A sense of a larger story of what happened before the events of the original Halo. Prep for pod launches, bring weapon systems online. Expecting trouble, Captain? We have Captain Cutter, and he's your, your classic starship captain. We have uh, the classic hothead, uh, Sergeant Forge. He has a sort of uh, tension-filled relationship with Professor Anders, the science chick. Forge doesn't think it's safe for you to go down there yet. I can take care of myself. Serena always gets that last word in on the bridge of the Spirit of Fire, and she's kind of funny and sarcastic. When I went out to the Japanese recording sessions, I asked her, so, you know, is Serena still funny in Japanese? And the response was, yes, she's still a bitch. Serena, get out of my lab. You know, if you don't have a history to the world and you don't have motivations for these characters, in the long run, people won't remember it. You need those human characters that you can relate to. But on the other side, you've got to have a bad guy. The Covenant has a religion, and they have a structure, and they have a society. The Covenant is a fractious society. It's made up of a number of species. They don't all get along, but it makes the political makeup of the universe interesting. The war with the humans will require a great deal many more machines than we can currently muster. I will take what we have. If you've played through the Halo games before, uh, you, you know the Arbiter. That's not our Arbiter. Our Arbiter is a, is a mean guy. He's Darth Vader times ten. Like the rest of your race, weak and undisciplined. In our game, we wanted a good guy, bad guy thing, and the Covenant, you know, for the most part, are kind of evil. Um, but it's a chance to kind of go see how they live too, right? Really tried to play up the Halo fiction. Arbiter, ready to kill. I love the Arbiter. He has probably one of the coolest abilities I think that's ever been in a strategy game. He has his rage ability. Bam! That's pretty satisfying. Where the hell are we, Serena? Actually, I'm still working on that, sir. And when the flood shows up, it's utter chaos. It, in some ways, stops this war and gives both parties something much, much bigger to worry about. The flood isn't really even an alien. It's something so completely alien to us that even the aliens look normal. They do have their own society, and it's just, but it's just so different that we can't see it. Many different people have a different feel for what the flood is, but certainly it has a lot of the characteristics of virus and zombies at the same time. They slowly infect you and you become them. Its sole purpose is to literally consume everything in its path. The flame pros are very good against the flood, but infantry will be taken over by the flood and turned against you. So taking in units which can be turned against you is generally not a good strategy to have with the flood. I've got a whole bunch of flood chasing me. So I actually lost my units there, and now I'm having to use my own flamethrowers to take out my own guys. They know each other. They did breakfast together. Those guys are torn. One of the neatest things about the Halo universe is that it doesn't answer all the questions in a very easy way. Who are the forerunners? Why are the Flood there? Um, who really is the ultimate bad guy here? I think the thing which is always in the background of everything in Halo, and in Halo Wars in particular, is the forerunner technology. The thing that attracts me to the Halo universe is this kind of sense of awe and mystery with almost uh, mystical overtones. You don't really know what the Forerunners were or what they are. The Forerunners disappeared over 100,000 years ago, but they still have a huge impact on, on the actual universe today. Now that's not what I expected. It's that sense of, of time and all those questions of what happened so long ago that really give the scope to all the Halo games.